In this video, I'm going to talk to you about pathology of the lumbar intervertebral discs. There are 23 intervertebral discs, and if we look at the anatomy of one to start with, then the outer covering along here okay, is known as the annulus fibrosis, and then the inner center is known as the nucleus pulposus. Now, I've got three discs here, so this would be a normal looking disc. So the nucleus is contained within the annulus, and I'm not sure if you can see, but on the outer part here, there are circles, like concentric rings, and they, they are known as the lamella, and you have roughly between 15 and 25 of these concentric rings here. And basically, one ring travels in this direction, the next one travels in this direction, and so on, and so on, because it gives its resilience. Now, so it's mainly a water-based type of substance, and actually as we get older, the disc over time can actually deteriorate. And then we have something called like degenerative disc disease. Now the problem is with a disc is that it can go through stages of a bulge, it can also protrude, extrude, then it's obviously going to progress to a prolapsed intervertebral disc or a herniated intervertebral disc. And then finally, it can actually separate and be known as a sequestration. And if you're looking at this one here, you can see the fluid now is starting to, to bulge along here. You might not get any symptoms with this one. You might find that if it's within the annulus, you might get some um, localized back pain, but you might find many people will have a bulge of a disc but have no symptoms. When it slowly progresses, to something like this. So this would be a prolapsed intervertebral disc, then no doubt that is going to contact something. There is a ligament posteriorly known as the posterior longitudinal ligament along here, and you might find that is very painful if the fluid touches that ligament, so your back hurts. You're not going to get any neurological symptoms into the leg because there's probably no contact to the nerve root. However, if it's gone to this stage like this one, and also on this one here, where the fluid is exiting, tends to go posteriorly laterally, and then you might find the nerve root at exit is going to be contacted. And if I show you on this one, the thing is with a lumbar spine, which is different to the cervical spine, is that within the lumbar spine, if this one is, say, L4, and this one is L5, then the nerve root at exits is below. So this is going to be L4 nerve root. And then this one is going to be L5 nerve root. So you probably find that if a disc exits to the side, it's going to contact the L4 nerve root, which is fine. However, if I to lift up this here and show you, you might find that if a disc has prolapsed, it doesn't actually contact the nerve root at exits, it contacts the nerve root that goes down, okay? So it's called the traversal or descending nerve root. So that nerve root here is gonna contact, if you can see it just there, it's gonna contact not the one that exits the level, it's going to contact the one that exits below. So you might find if this is the L5 and S1 disc, then you might find that it doesn't contact the L5 nerve root that comes out, it contacts the S1 nerve root. So um, just bear that in mind, because within the cervical spine, if you have a disc prolapse between C4 and C5, the nerve root is above the level. So that's going to contact the exit nerve root of C5, whereas in the lumbar, it will change. So there's a little bit about discs in the lumbar and a little bit about nerve root compression as the nerve root exits. I hope you've enjoyed the short presentation and thank you for watching.